we'll hear from John Board. John, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Senza. Hope you've been well. Um, good afternoon, Chairs Haskell and Elliot, ranking members uh, Whitgers and Haynes, and members of the Higher Education and Employment Advancement Committee. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to testify on House Force, on House Bill 6404 and at funding the debt free co uh, community college program. As you guys know, my name is John Board, a graduate of the CSCU system and former member of the SAC of the Board of Regions. Um, I'll just come out and say it. Uh, I oppose House Bill 6404 as a concept of the responsible action for someone to take when they oppose a policy, when they oppose a policy is to pres uh, propose an alternative so then we can actually get to yes. Uh, don't get me wrong, I do believe that over that the overarching common objective of finding a way to make university more affordable is a noble goal. However, this program has been riddled with issues. Most recently, when the Board of Regions had to take from reserves to fund the program, uh, while the three funding streams which are proposed are, I guess, they're okay, uh, I still firmly believe that uh, my plan, uh, that my holistic and interdisciplinary uh, tuition contracting proposal, uh, tuition contracting, providing our students and graduates with a fighting chance is the best way to move forward as a state. Uh, I would direct uh, members to two pieces of previous testimony, which I gave on Senate Bill 273 from 2019 and House Bill 5895 uh, from 2021. Uh, I'll also note that I think that uh, in relation to previous testimony from today, that we do need to look at Math 100P on a university level. There are problems with remedial classes, as well as uh, the structure of the Board of regions uh, as well in our proposed alternatives in the past. In closing, I would like to quote President Obama, a good compromise is a piece of legislation. Uh, a good compromise is like a good legislation. It's like a good sentence or a good piece of music. Everyone can recognize it. Then they say, huh, it works. It makes sense. Uh, thank you for your time and consideration. And I'm happy and prepared to answer any questions which members of the committee may have. Thank you. Thanks, John. I see one question from Representative Zayogas. Yes, thank you. Um, Mr. Borg, uh, can you enlighten me? I, I'm not familiar with the philanthropic uh, match program. So, so, first of all, thanks for the question, uh, Representative. So, there is, uh, so what I've actually, uh, I actually have been putting forward this tuition contracting proposal. Um, for the past few sessions, I know I've spoken with uh, the leadership of the committee uh, on it. And essentially the notion of tuition contracting is that a student gets a set rate, a set tuition rate for, let's just say on the university level for all four years of their, uh, uh, of their uh, quest to get a degree. After those four years, if it takes longer, their tuition would bump up to whatever the incoming freshman rate uh, would be. So by having this tuition contracting proposal, uh, it provides students with a sense of uh, predictability in terms of what their loans are going to be, uh, how much they can pay uh, every semester, etc. cetera. Uh, there's a lot more to the plan. I know I've submitted uh, details of it to the committee. Uh, so that that's just a general brief overview. All right. Thank you, then. You're welcome. Thanks, Representative Zyrgis. Representative Haynes. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, John, for being here today. I appreciate your advocacy always. Um, one of the things that is in your plan, and could you expound on a little bit further, is the whole notion of living here, uh, learn here, live here, and, and how does that work? Um, you know, one thing I've always talked to my um, my colleague, Senator Haskell, about is um, regarding um, free tuition, you know, the state of Connecticut needs some payback for that, and I think your plan gives some of that to a situation where it's all win-win for everybody. So if you could just expound on that just a little bit, that'd be great. Absolutely. Uh, thanks for the question, Representative. Um, 
So my modus operandi whenever crafting policy is uh, one, try to make it as bipartisan and nonpartisan as possible, and two, make it interdisciplinary. Uh, so this tuition contracting proposal is three parts. One, uh, rep uh, referring to Representative Ziogas' uh, question, uh, it's the notion of tuition contracting. Two is uh, Learn Here, Live Here, which is basically implementing uh, the Learn Here, Live Here program. Correct me if I'm wrong, Senator Wickers, I think that goes back to at least 2014. Uh, so fully implementing that, allowing uh, students uh, upon uh, graduation to put $2,500 a year of their uh, income tax payment into a first-time home buyer's savings account up to 10 years. Uh, then the funds, uh, we would uh, have the state require uh, students to either live in the state uh, for five years, or we can tie it to our opportunity zones uh, on a federal level. And then three is the examination of student loan rates, working with Chesla uh, and others uh, to try to bring down uh, student loan rates on a statewide uh, on a statewide level. And I know that there is a bill uh, for a student loan uh, examination uh, going forward. So those are the three parts of this overall comprehensive interdisciplinary uh, approach to solving the issue of higher education costs in the state. Thank you, John, and I appreciate the clarification on that. And I assume that it's written up in testimony that you submitted as well. Uh, yes, I, uh, I attached uh, the language, uh, the outline, at least uh, in a supplemental piece of testimony that should be up for the committee soon. Thank you very much, John, and thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative Haynes. I don't see further questions. I'll ask just one, John. You said that the PACT program has been rife with, with problems. Um, can you describe any of them? Well, I, I think, uh, as you as you know, Senator, uh, I've been, uh, you know, I've been advocating this plan for some time, and I do think the issues of taking from the reserve fund to um, taking from the reserve fund this past, uh, I think it was November, November or December, if I uh, if I'm correct, um, is an is an issue. Uh, even though I know the uh, intent of the legislature is to backfill. Uh, those reserves uh, later on, I do think it's it's an issue, and I think that there needs to be other uh, other problems. I know we don't see eye to eye on this issue. I know we haven't for some time, but like I said, hopefully with there's uh, some way that uh, we can at least come to a compromise, if not uh, have a respectful disagreement uh, on these issues. And I know we uh, have the ability to work together on other issues uh, moving forward, both in higher ed and other committees. Sure. Well, I thank you for, for your time and for your testimony, John, and um, appreciate your perspective on this. Uh, I don't see any other questions from committee members, so I thanks so much. Hey, thanks so much. Have a good day.